David Vizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. In this episode of Paratech 10, that is episode 83, we are going to address the camshaft requirement for our Mission Impossible 318 Mopar engine. That's the project that we're doing with Uncle Tony and uh, the help of what is now stacking up is quite a few people. Right, the latest one here, and I gotta say thank you for this, is I called up ARP to get some uh, lightweight nuts for the connecting rods for uh, part of the project of lightening those rods as much as possible. They insisted that they be involved in this and anything for St. Jude's was for nothing, right? So they sent me a set of rod bolts plus a set of nuts to go with them, the lightweight ones. So thank you, ARP. So we've got another socially responsible company there. So guys, whenever you are going to buy bolts, make sure you buy ARP bolts. Support them. They're support, helping support St. Jude's. Anyway, on with the camshaft selection. There is a big difficulty in selecting a cam for a restricted motor. Such a difficulty is actually compounded by the fact that we're looking for a cam that will not only be good in a restricted engine, but also when we change the carburetor for something bigger, it will be a non-restricted engine. So now we have a double death blow. Well, not quite a death blow, but a double job trying to get the cam right. Now, fortunately, as many of you know, I have an incredible amount of cam testing experience. What we're going to do is first address the situation for the two barrel uh, build. Now, with any cam, we have a situation where we must match the compression ratio with the fuel octane and the cam events such that we get the maximum area under the power curve. Torque is always our goal. If we get torque, the horsepower will come along as a consequence of our developing that torque. So what we want for our Mission Impossible engine is a camshaft which will suit the cylinder head and displacement combination and the compression. So those three things become vitally important. Now, why are we so focused on the compression? That's because the compression directly dictates how much fuel octane we're going to need. Part of the deal here is that we can run on pump gas. Well, sure, it might be 93 octane, but pump gas nonetheless. Now, for the best build for a race engine, you need a dynamic compression which exceeds 9 to 1. For a street build, you need a dynamic compression that better suits street octane fuels. So typically 8 to 1 for a dynamic compression. Now what do I mean by a dynamic compression? That is the compression ratio that is measured from the point the valve closes, not from the bottom of the stroke. Now, when we typically measure the static compression ratio, it's always measured with the piston being assumed to be at the bottom of the bore. Well, we push out some of the charge at low RPM because the piston comes up the bore before the intake closes. So we need to have an eight to one compression minimum for our street build. Now, 
this is going to be something of a compromise here because we are going to see a lot of manifold vacuum whilst the engine is wide open throttle. So I've done some rough calculations and I think we're going to have to go with about an 8.3, 8.4 to 1 dynamic compression on the cam. At this point, we're going to look at the cam and see what can be reground on the stock cam. For that, I called Steve Demas of Demas Cams. Now, Steve does a lot of cam repair. He's an ex John Reed uh, cam guy. Did it was brought up into the industry grinding cup car cams so he's had a lot of experience in high performance since John passed away from a, a crash in his newly rebuilt aircraft some years ago now Steve has been out on his own and one of the things that he does is repair camshafts now we're going to repair our stock camshaft into something a little more healthy than what you typically see on a factory grind. So I put in a call to Steve and let's see where that took us. So Steve, let me just see if I've got all that right. What you're saying is you can grind a reasonably aggressive profile on almost any flat top it can be it Chrysler, Chevrolet or Ford right and of course for, from our point of view this fits our bill we're only removing metal now what about life right now our life's going to be pretty yeah. good here because uh, we're not grinding our cup right so so you're saying that the profiles you're going to use on this will still give an extended life Right, especially on the Chrysler with the bigger lifter, if I got that right. Okay, well look, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, sort through a cam profile on my program, uh, a basic cam profile, and then see what you've got that fits it. So let me get back to you with that, and we'll address that uh, when the time comes. Okay. Alrighty. Yep. Okay. Cheers and Steve. Talk to you later. Well, the good news there is that the cam's not going to be a problem. For a lot less money than we pay for an outright camshaft buy, Steve will grind us a cam every bit as good as a new camshaft on our original stock cam. So that's going to cost us 50 to 70 dollars for a profile that is up to the standard of a guy that used to work grinding cup car cams. So we should be able to get a good profile at a very good price. Now, the bit we come to is what are we going to use that will get us that 8.3 or so dynamic compression. So let's look into that. Well, here we are with the Torque Master Cam program. First thing I want you to note is that it says it's for a small block Chevy hydraulic flat tappet cam and engine components. Now then, let's address the 23 degree bit first. The Chrysler engine cylinder head is very similar to a Chevrolet one. I showed you uh, the intake port which is the most critical one here. And you can see that the R318 is like a small version of a Chevy head. So I think in lieu of the fact I don't have a dedicated Chrysler uh, program here. So I'm thinking that within the odd degree or so, 
The Chevrolet one will predict the right events for us. The most important factors that we need to uh, address here will be the dynamic compression, the duration, and the lobe centerline angle necessary to suit our project engine, not something roughly similar. After inputting the compression ratio, 10.5, and by juggling the RPM at which we want peak power, we can get a camshaft with the 8.3 target that we're addressing here, as well as the lobe centerline angle and the amount of cam advance we need to use. Also, you will see that it calculates the uh, duration. We're using a single pattern cam and it's calling for 277 degrees of duration at six thousandths. The 50 thousandths duration will crop up when we actually make a profile decision. Note that so far we've calculated everything. Unlike we see from some sources, none of our camshaft spec has been guessed. Everything that we're having as an answer is the result of calculations. But it doesn't stop there. We also calculate the vacuum that will be achieved as well as the torque and horsepower. Additionally, the head flow required is calculated along with the port volume. Now, a few points on this. First, the flow is not the flow at peak valve lift we're going to use in this case. It's the flow of two valves. The opening of one intake on one cylinder when the crank is 45 degrees past top dead center. And the valve on another cylinder, the one that's going to draw next, when the valve is open, the amount that exists when the crank is 45 degrees before bottom dead center. Sound complicated? Well, things get like this when you've got such a restrictive intake that you're likely to be pulling a vacuum in the intake manifold when the throttle's wide open and you're getting up towards peak RPM. Now, as for the port volume, we need to scale that slightly. That's because the Chevrolet port is longer than the Chrysler port. So, that has to be compensated for if we're going to use a Chevrolet program. And the shorter Chrysler port works out that it needs to be 140 cc's to meet the requirements of this CAM program, which is exactly what we've got. If we check the flow figures out, we are in the right ballpark for that. So, our torque and horsepower predictions are realistic. As for making 318 horsepower, which is our projected figure, we should just clear that. However, if we're going to make one horsepower per cube, we've got to allow the fact that this motor has been rebored and is just over 320 inches now. So we should make that as well. While things may be looking pretty good at this stage, Let's not fall into the trap of thinking that this project is ever going to be easy. Because it's not. We're still going to have to watch our P's and Q's all the way through this. But we are one step closer to achieving our goal. Now then, we know what can we want. Let's just check with Steve and see if he's got anything near that. Okay, I just gave Steve a call. And we have a cam here, which looks like it will do the job. I talked to Steve about grinding this on a factory original camshaft, and he said that it was doable. We can get 107 degree lobe center line angle, or at least 108 in a worst case scenario. So we're either there or very close. The duration is going to be 276 by 276 at the 6,000s lift. And 
At 50 thousandths it will be 223 by 223. Lobe lift will be 314 thousandths. So that works out at... So 314 thousandths times 1.5 is 471 thousandths. Well, we targeted something around a half inch lift and we are pretty close to it there. So that's good. So that's the cam we're going to use. So that should wrap up our cam selection deal. But I have still got a few things to say. As usual, I want to push the fact that we need subscribers to make the audience for our deal raffling off parts and engines meet a wider audience so that we get a better return for the St. Jude's kids. Right Now, I have had a, a few people say they can't see how getting subscribers is going to help St. Jude's and raising money for such. Well, it's quite simple. If you're going to have a raffle, the more people who enter it, the more money you'll get for it. Now, if we only had one person as an audience and they bought a ticket for, say, $10, they're going to win. So they will have just bought an engine which probably cost us five or six thousand dollars if we can't all the time and everything for ten dollars we'd have been better off selling it but we're not here to make ten dollars we're here to make more than that as much more as we can so if we've got an audience of a hundred thousand people and just ten percent of them buy a ten dollar ticket that's a hundred thousand dollars we've raised but we're not going to do that if we've only got a paltry amount of subscribers, right? So we need subscribers. So make sure you check in next time and be sure that you subscribe. So be sure to just do it.